What's up guys, it's your favorite TV show sensation, Peppa Pig here to drop part four of what if Deku flipped the script. If you guys made it this far, definitely drop a like button down below and let's get started. Hey Ross, sauce it up. We pick up her story in a different spot than we had uh, last time. You know, obviously, Izuku and Araku were doing their thing. But now, instead of that, we're going to be starting the story off with Izuku on the podium. Now, Izuku would be looking up to the crowd of everybody at the UA Sports Festival. And he would turn to see Midnight, right? And Midnight looks back at him and she's like, come on, you go, kid. Like, you got it. And Izuku just looks at her and he's like, bro, Midnight, like, why are you looking so keyword and then you know he proceeds to pretty much like just look at the crowd and be like all right so uh i guess i'm supposed to give a speech he looks at them and you know time skip speech because i don't feel like coming up with one right now but regardless the crowd loves it like the crowd literally is eating it up and izuku just he, you know you know what i'm saying my, my boy izuku went crazy with his speech right everybody's all hyped up and eventually the first event of the you know the ua sports festival would start which is essentially the race now the race would be a very very interesting part because most of the time my dekus are always either so fast or so broken that you know they never really have to actually go through with the race but this one he's not that broken yet so you know we would obviously start off and as soon as it starts Todoroki freezes the you know the course right now Izuku being smarter than you know Todor than everybody else would have immediately jumped up as to avoid uh, Todoroki from freezing his shoes to the ground and he would start running right he starts running as fast as he can he uses black whip tendrils to actually latch onto the zero pointers and using the grab gra uh, like like using the um the force of them punching and like trying to hit izuku mid-air he would use that to pretty much propel himself farther than todoroki could have even imagined and then he would immediately activate full cowling as he lands on the ground and just like my boy starts sprinting he starts going crazy right and he starts running straight towards the finish line and it would be at this moment that the zero pointers would kind of like turn their attentions toward todoroki now they try to get him but he would just freeze them and he continues going on you know with an angry expression in his face bakugo himself would be flying in with this explosion quirk and izuku would be towards the front of everything as he would finally make it to the area where there's a bunch of holes in the ground and izuku just using black whip would immediately be able to propel himself over the entirety of the canyon and make it where the landmines are right at this point everybody's pretty much in his dust and using 30 percent full cowling izuku would immediately be able to clear the you know the bomb area and just pretty much jump over it landing on a bomb which would propel him forward and then use black whip to actually um what's it called to leech onto one of the one of the poles that would be in the ua ua festival and from here zuku just pretty much gets first place right he lunges past and everybody's like oh yeah it's the speech kid you know like they start going crazy because izuku he really just went off you know what i mean and from here bakugo ends up coming in second and todoroki ends up coming in third place right behind bakugo like literally not even a second after right and what would pretty much end up happening here is we get into the next event which is the cavalry battle now i'm gonna put it to you guys as blunt as i can i don't like covering the cavalry battle i think it's boring and i don't know how to really raise the stakes so we're gonna skip it but just know izuku wins and his team was the same ones as the original regardless though his first battle that he's going to be going up against is still going to be shinso and shinso is actually going to be having a bit of an upper hand this time because ojiro is not going to tell izuku hey izuku like watch out for his quirk you know like i talked to him none of that but izuku is going to actually move different this time now what pretty much ends up happening is genuinely speaking if izuku has nobody to tell him hey like that guy has kind of a quirk like don't talk to him i feel like more than likely izuku is going to get caught by shinso still however because he has one for all just like he would in the original it would pretty much play out just like this where shinso gets in the ring and would start talking nonsense to deku telling him how he's so blessed to have such a powerful quirk and he doesn't know what it's like to be born with a weaker one right now izuku would be just about to like pretty much talk back to him and you know pretty much be angry and he does say something back shinso would smirk and immediately izuku would stop moving shinso from here would be like walk off the edge and izuku 
Izuku, like, Izuku just starts doing that. But suddenly, you know, he flicks his finger and he gets his consciousness back through the pain of breaking his entire finger. And from here, what ends up happening is Deku rushes at Shinso and says, you think it's funny to make, to, you know, to win your fights like that? You didn't even land a punch. He blitzes at Shinso and a punch to the stomach as, you know, Shinso would get flying off the ring. But Izuku grabs him with his black whip and tosses him back into it as he kicks him in the gut. And then, you know, finally lets Shinso fly out of the ring. So, you know, he was just gonna punch him but like he felt like he deserved a bit more considering you know Shinso really thought you know he could catch Izuku off guard in such a cowardly way right like that's the same as killing somebody in a video game when they're not looking or knocking somebody off in a game when they're not looking like it's just so cowardly like bro like fight them when they're at 100 percent but regardless though, what pretty much ends up happening because of this is we end up getting a scene in which Izuku is up next against Todoroki. Now Todoroki this time around would end up being like, oh, like, are you all my secret love child? And this time, instead of the reaction that Izuku would have gave him, Izuku just bursts out laughing. Like he literally looks at Todoroki and he's like, bro, you're a joke. Like, get out of my face. Like, I, like you don't know what you're talking about. And, you know, Todoroki gets so mad because Todoroki thought he was seriously onto something, but seeing the way that Izuku just, like, just completely disregarded him just made Todoroki mad. Going on into the next fight, Izuku would look towards the direction of Todoroki as he looks at Johnny who's in the stands, nods, and then looks at Todoroki once again. And immediately the proctor says, Hajime! As soon as that happens, Todoroki shoots a giant geyser of ice at Deku. And Deku would think to himself that, you know, he really can't, like, do anything to this ice. So he's going to have to, like, dodge out of the way or try to send a, you know, a flick, like a flick to break the ice, right? And Izuku knows, like, it's probably not the best choice. But if he can just shatter the ice one time, one time, bandage it up and fight Bakugo, he can win. And so that's exactly what Deku does. Todoroki shoots the, uh, the ice at Deku, and Deku just shatters it with the flick of his of his uh, of his finger. Right from here, Izuku now has two broken fingers, and Izuku would rush towards the direction of Todoroki so fast that Todoroki would shoot an ice thing at him, but he would be able to dodge out of the way and continue lunging at the direction of Todoroki. Right from here, Izuku gets so close that Todoroki literally can't do anything because if he tries to use his ice, he's gonna get affected by it as well. So Todoroki would flinch and shoot fire at Deku, which Deku would say, so you got another quirk. And Izuku from here would go on to smack Todoroki as hard as he can, getting a full KO. And after this, what ends up happening is pretty much we end up getting a situation in which Deku would be in the finals and Bakugo walks up into the ring and, you know, he's thinking to himself that he's just going to try to do his best. And instead of being like, oh, I'm going to prove everybody I'm better than you, because the last time he tried that, it, it didn't go too well for Bakugo. He kind of humbled himself like Izuku low-key humbled Bakugo harshly, right? Like he, he humbled him in a way that Bakugo is never going to step out of line again. But regardless, though, what pretty much ends up happening is Deku and Bakugo step into the ring and Bakugo's strategy would pretty much consist of staying away uh, like you know staying in the air so that Deku couldn't do anything but eventually Deku using black whips would have ended up catching Bakugo's leg dragging him into the ring and you know Izuku would say something that catches Bakugo off guard he's like the Bakugo I knew would have never decided to run away like that the way that you were he would have came in like guns blazing and when Bakugo realized that he was fighting on such a defensive like such a such a pussy type of way Bakugo Bakugo realizes that he does not want to be a part of any of that. So he rushes at Deku and they would have a full on hand to hand fight where Izuku uses 30% and it would be so similar to the battle they had when Bakugo ended up telling Izuku the truth about his emotions and how he's been feeling. But ultimately Izuku would be the one to ultimately win and Izuku would be the one to get first place, Bakugo second and Todoroki third. This would then lead us into them returning back to class and picking their hero names. Now, ultimately, Izuku picks the hero name Hawk, and when it comes to who he's going to be interning with, Izuku decides that instead of going off to intern with anybody, he would ask if it's cool if he, instead of interning with a pro hero, could just intern with Johnny or All Might. And so All Might would send him a recommendation, and Izuku ends up accepting his, but in reality, would just train with Johnny. Now, Izuku's not exactly the best of friends with Ida, so this is going to be changing something slightly and so what pretty much ends up happening is Ida you know Ida kind of Ida kind of doesn't have a good good story here because if Izuku's not friends with Ida nobody's going to be there to save him and with nobody there to save Ida 
it's not a lot of fun. Like imagine getting paralyzed. That's pretty much what happens to Ida because Stain ends up stabbing him in the back instead of killing him. And, you know, Ida is en ended up found hours later after, you know, uh, no, a couple minutes later after screams were let out. And, you know, Ida just lost his ability to run. His need for revenge and his, you know, his bloodlustedness caused him to have to deal with the consequences for the rest of his life. His hero career will never come to pass because Ida couldn't let it go. Even though his brother told him to not do it, Ida still took everything into his own hands. And this is the fate that he was dealt with. So now, now Ida has to accept it. But cutting back to Yue, Yue would be under uh, like like a bunch of like back backlashes due to the fact that one of their students got injured really, really bad. And Ida would actually come out publicly stating the real reason why he got hurt. So Yue ultimately ended up closing down for about two weeks, but they would open back up once everybody finished their, you know, their internships. And what would end up happening is they returned only to have their uh, their final exams, right? Now, during their final exams, because Izuku and Uraraka have been studying together, they both ace it, right? The written portion, easy. And when it comes to the teams that everybody's going to be put in, I still think that um, Todoroki is going to be paired with Momo and Izuku is going to be paired with Bakugo just because they, they still kind of don't like each other. So UA decided to pit both of them together to see how they would work after everything that's happened between the two of them, right? And so what pretty much ends up happening is they're both ultimately having to work together with each other and even though they don't like each other they ultimately end up having to kind of squash the beef for a moment right and you know they end up pretty much actually making a pretty good team regardless of how much they don't like each other right what they end up doing is having Bakugo rush in at All Might and blind him using his gauntlet explosion to catch him off guard. And Izuku would be the one to come in and land an attack on All Might, which would be a pressure point. And Izuku is really bad at pressure points, but he would be able to land it on All Might and All Might's arm would be out of commission. From here, All Might throws a kick at Bakugo, which he wasn't expecting seeing as All Might doesn't fight like that. And Bakugo notices that All Might fights similarly to Izuku. So he was able to dodge it just barely right by the tip of his hair and All Might continues trying to face off against Todoroki and Izuku. Now, the fight would continue going, and Izuku ultimately ends up landing a powerful 30% blow on All Might's face as Bakugo comes in and shoots a massive explosion at him, right? And from here, All Might just looks around as both of them disappear. And, you know, then he turns back around and sees Bakugo throw Deku with his howitzer impact. And Izuku's coming at him so fast with a 40% blow straight to his abdominal area. The opposite of where his injury is at, obviously. And All Might just completely gets knocked into like four buildings and just, he literally collapses four buildings due to that attack. And All Might is like just taken out of commission, right? Izuku would then proceed to blitz towards the exit. And from here, the hero team would be announced the winners, right? as they would pass and suddenly they would be told about the forest training uh you know camp where they're all going to be trying to elevate their own quirks elevate their training elevate their fighting powers and all that stuff and it would pretty much all be minus Ida since he's not there the new class president would actually end up being Momo and the one who would be like the the one who's behind her I think I think if like I had to pick I'm not gonna say it's Deku but I do think that a person who would probably come into that role pretty easily would be somebody like Mina. I think that Mina would come to that role easily, right? But regardless though, what ends up happening is they get on the train and you know they make their way towards the forest training camp it, it was actually a bus I, I i lost my train of thought but regardless though what ends up happening is they make their way towards the area and once they arrive they would realize like hey hey hold on now buddy like th like we're not there like it's still like a, a, about two hours away and from here you know the the the, he the heroes the pro heroes look at them smirk and they toss them over the railing the team literally has to make their way towards the camp they do so, and since there's no stakes here, I'm not going to jump into anything, but just know Uraraka and Deku would be making a good team, with Uraraka making the monsters float, and even making Izuku float for some very easy destruction points for Izuku, right? Considering he's going to be destroying quite a lot of dirt robots, right? Uh, I mean, of dirt creatures. And eventually their training would lead them to the day which the Vanguard, which the villain Vanguard action squad would come in and, you know, they have to defend against them, right? Like they have to do what they got to do. And the fight would happen. Deku still goes over to Koda. And so, you know, he's still there to save him. And what ends up happening because of this is actually that Izuku has to fight muscular, but this time around, it's going to be a lot more even because if we do keep one thing in mind, 
it's that Izuku, when he fought muscular, he only had access to about 5% full cowling. And when he was stressing himself and his body and stuff like that, he was not capable of dealing with muscular. This time around, Izuku's actually going to be much faster than muscular, and he's actually going to be able to keep up with him a lot better. So it's going to be much more of an interesting fight. But the fight would start like this, like muscular reveals himself and Izuku looks to muscular as, you know, muscular tries to punch him, but Izuku dodges out of the way, moves Koda and tells Koda to run now. From here, Koda begins running off and Izuku tells him not to turn back no matter what. And Koda actually would start running until he realizes that he can't leave him behind. So Koda would return and when he does, Izuku would pretty much be blitzing around muscular until muscular finally lands a blow. Izuku's on the ground and muscular would be about to hit him again with a powerful blow that probably would have injured him badly but Koda comes in shoots water at him and that would distract muscular long enough for Izuku to power through a 45% full cowling smash to his face now that punch would send muscular flying off of the mountain and he would crash the, at the ground with a loud thud which would ultimately be the thing that leads the heroes to you know being able to save you know Deku not to get hurt and all that stuff and so they end up making their way towards Bakugo right but ultimately he still gets captured and the villains would end up actually getting away this would lead us to the situation in terms of this this would lead us to the situation in which um what's it called all might ends up fighting off for one right now normally they all end up going after Bakugo and stuff like that. And they're still going to. So, you know, nothing really changes there. Or nothing really also changes during the fight with All Might versus All for One. So that kind of remains constant. And Izuku's the one who's actually responsible for saving Bakugo. But once All Might ends up using the last bits of One for All, he would actually have been able to defeat All for One a lot easier. And, you know, wouldn't have looked as hard just because of that Cobra Kai training that he got from, you know, Johnny and stuff like that. And so once the fight would be over, All Might would be visited by, in the hospital by Johnny and Deku, who would both be talking to All Might and would ask him, you know, how he's feeling, right? Now, All Might would be like, ah, you know, felt better. And from here, All Might would look to Izuku as he asks him if he's ready to be, you know, his successor. And Izuku says he's as ready as ever, saying that he'll never let him down and that it's about time that the old fart gave up being a hero, that it's time for him to show All Might how it's really done. All Might laughs and from here, you know, Johnny would say, ah, kid, you still got a long ways to go. And from here, a person would be listening to this all through the door. And this person would be Bakugo was like, what? Like he, he, that's how he had his quirk. Like that's how he became strong. Like if it wasn't for the fact that All Might gave him that quirk, I'd still be stronger. And you know, Bakugo at this point would be mad, but her like Bakugo, Bakugo was not having a good time once he realizes that Izuku is only stronger than him because of All Might. So Bakugo gets very, very angry, but ultimately he can't do anything just because he's already tried fighting Deku and he always loses every time. But ultimately Bakugo would try to like black blackmail uh, Deku by being like, oh, like I'll tell people that that's not your quirk. And Izuku just looks to Bakugo and would say, dude, like you can tell people it's not my quirk, but ultimately you're going to be put in danger because villains will try to come after us even harder, not to mention that I'm gonna beat you down again. Like if you if you let out the secret, like trust me, Bakugo, like you're going to be in the hospital for months. And you know, Bakugo hearing that, like Deku letting out a little bit of that dark side would kind of be like, all right, you got it, big bro. Like, you, you know what? Now that I think about it, I think I was tripping. And Izuku's like, yeah, 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 you were tripping. And from here, what pretty much ends up happening is Izuku would find himself in, in the um in the situation of being in class, when Mirio comes in and he would pretty much end up telling them about how they need more experience, right? And he would challenge all of them to a face-off in which Mirio defeats everybody else with ease, including Bakugo. And once he gets to Deku, Deku would actually have reached a level of one for all, which is actually 40% finally with control. And since he has that, he's actually gained access to two new quirks. Number one being float and number two being danger sense, which would actually come in and immediately as soon as Mirio tries to hit Deku like Mirio would use the tactic of poking Izuku's eyes and then punching him but because of danger sense Izuku would be able to dodge out of the way and Mirio would be shocked Izuku would be able to keep up with Mirio's speed and ultimately they would both tag each other over and over going back and forth with clashes of a fist going crazy and the class would just be watching all impressed including Nezure and Tamaki who didn't expect anybody in this class to be able to keep up with Mirio like Mirio was not somebody to laugh at so 
it was very impressive when they saw that a UA student, uh, 1A student was able to do that, a first year, if anything, right? And so Mirio would congratulate Deku for keeping up with him because ultimately the battle would be called by Zawa. And then Mirio invites him to go with him with Cernaida, right? And because Izuku accepts in the original, that's going to be remaining constant. And because of this, this is sort of where the story ends. I'm not going to lie to you guys because I could go into the overhaul arc and like explain Izuku, you know, meeting Cernaida and going to the alleyway but as soon as we get to that part izuku's just gonna mollywop overhaul and izuku with 40 percent full cowling at this point would easily mop overhaul and regardless of whether you guys say oh like overhaul could maybe do something but without the abilities of his uh, of his henchmen with him and him not being able to go all out because it's a street izuku would quickly be able to tag him and with mirio there with him early on and you know overhaul not being able to actually use his quirk destroying bullets Izuku would be able to capture Eri and bring her to safety way earlier, pretty much getting wrist rid of the last villain considering that all, all for one got taken care of and Shigaraki's all by himself now. So, you know, there's nothing really left. And so that pretty much just concludes what if Deku was, you know, was Hawk or flip the script, which actually does sound a whole lot cooler if I'm admitting it myself. But regardless though, guys, if you guys went on to enjoy this, what if definitely, definitely, definitely make sure to slap up the like button and comment down below what other what ifs you guys would want to see on the channel next time. That said, it has been your boy Zether and I am out. Peace.